In case you aren't familiar, the collapse conjecture is a simple but elusive problem where you take a number, divide it by 2 if even, and multiply by 3 and add 1 if odd. Repeat as many times as you can, and eventually, with enough repetition, that number will go down to 1 sooner or later. With every number that's ever been tested, it has gone all the way down to 1. However, I can prove that you cannot prove that for every number it does go down to 1. And I can also prove that you can't prove the converse to be true, such that there is some number that doesn't. To warm you up to my perspective, I will present three cases. For the first case, start by imagining an infinite casino. There are infinite people playing infinite cards, infinite dice, flipping infinite coins, and so on. One popular game in this infinite casino is a dice rolling game. This game is played with special dice. If a 1 or a 2 is rolled on a given die, that die disappears completely. However, if a 3 is rolled, that die becomes two dice, both equal to the first. As the number of rolls increases, what kind of trend happens to the dice? And with an infinite number of rolls, what number of dice would you expect for a given starting number? If you'd like to figure out for yourself, pause the video. With this game, no matter how many times you roll dice, you'll always run out in the end. This is because the expected value of one die is less than the starting value in every case. The number of dice that you would expect is two-thirds the number of given starting dice, because of the simple probability of, you know, well, one-third chance of getting two die, you multiply those two together and you get two-thirds. And as you go to an infinite number of dice rolls, that expected value goes and takes you all the way down to zero dice for an infinite number of rolls. No matter how many dice you start with, you're always going to lose them. Take a second case, a different game where there is a coin where, if it lands on heads, it disappears, and if it lands on tails, it splits into two identical coins. Take a moment to figure out what will happen with an infinite number of coin flips. Pause the video now if you'd like to figure it out for yourself. This game is a textbook example of a martingale series where the expected value of a given result is equal to the starting state. If you have one coin, it is likely that you'll have about one coin in the end, and for a million coins, you're going to expect that you'll have an, a million coins at the end of all your flips for each of those million coins. For larger and larger numbers, the chance that for one round of coin flips, they all disappear, gets vanishingly thin as the number increases of uh, coins that are being flipped. For one coin, it's a 50-50 chance. For two coins, it's a one-quarter chance that they all disappear. And for a million coins, it's one over two to the power of a million chance that they disappear, and so on. So if you have an infinite number of coins, the chance that they will all flip to zero in any given round is zero. As you flip the coins for more and more rounds, however, the probability that they all get flipped to zero is larger and larger. For a million coins, the chance that the, that coin is all getting flipped to zero 
is 1 over 2 to the power of a million. However, for two rounds, it's 2 over 2 to the power of a million. For three rounds, it's 3 over 3 to the power of a million, and so on. And for an infinite number of rounds, you can expect that all the coins will eventually flip down to zero. However, when you have an infinite number of coins and flip them an infinite number of times, that leads to some rather, let's say, undefined behavior. And since the behavior is undefined, you can't really prove that with an infinite number of coins being flipped an infinite number of times, that you'll get anything in particular in terms of results. At least, the math doesn't work, and so you can't prove it mathematically. And you can prove that you can't prove it because you are bound to encounter a divide by zero or its equivalent somewhere. Take a third case, a third game, where if you flip a coin heads, it disappears, and if you flip it tails, it becomes three coins instead of two. Work it out for yourself, pause the video, or continue. For this last case, the number of coins just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing in pretty much every case. And so you could say that as time approaches infinity, or the number of flips approaches infinity, however you want to think about it, that the number of coins also approaches infinity. Very simple. There is, of course, the chance that the coins all do disappear, but for larger numbers, that chance is negligible. And if you start with an infinite number of coins, the chance is, in fact, zero. So, if you were to apply one of these three cases to the Hailstone series, which one do you think would represent it best? Pause the video now, if you would like to try it for yourself. Otherwise, continue. The most intuitive thing to do is to postulate that there's a 50-50 chance of any given number being odd or even, and then calculating the expected value by averaging together the odd and the even case, n over 2 plus 3n plus 1 all over 2, given that n is your starting number. And that makes a lot of intuitive sense, however, it's a bad assumption because if you have an odd number, then you put it through the hailstone series for one iteration, you're guaranteed to get an even number. There's a quick formula that takes that into account, which is the next number is equal to the first number over 2 if even, otherwise 3n plus 1 all over 2. And with this so-called shortcut function, we can just assume that it's 50-50, because it more or less is, for at least for the purposes of this video. You can figure it out for yourself what probability best represents it. But if you calculate the expected value for this shortcut function, you get the following. The expected value becomes the starting number plus a quarter. For large starting numbers, that last term, the one quarter term, is negligible. And so if it's negligible, that means that it best fits the second case, where the expected value is equal to the starting value. And remember that the Collatz conjecture asks you to prove that the number will always go down to 1 for any number for any length of time, which means you're effectively proving that as it approaches an infinite number of and an 
infinite number of iterations that it will go down to the ground state of 1. However, if you remember the coin flip example, you can't prove such a thing because from one direction your expected value approaches infinity and from the other direction it approaches the ground state. And so if you're willing to accept a 50-50 probability even odd for the shortcut function, then you can prove that it cannot be proven what result value you're going to get for an arbitrarily large number, for an arbitrarily large number of iterations. And so you cannot prove the Collatz conjecture one way or the other. However, I think that's kind of a silly and useless conclusion. Instead, if you think critically and understand what all of what I said over the past 10 plus minutes means, you would be able to figure out that, yes, all numbers will go down to 1, but for an infinite starting value, it's going to take an infinite surge upwards over an infinite number of iterations before it goes down to 1. And as such, it will never get there, and so you can't possibly prove it does if it never gets there, even if, logically speaking, it would. I hope that that's a satisfying conclusion. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Everyone have a lovely day. Tara, thank you for watching. I would like to make more math videos. Let me know if you're interested. Subscribe, and I will try to deliver. P.S. I found an interesting function when you take the hailstone series and convert it into a continuous function by replacing the piecewise function with uh, cosines and sines such that you know, with uh, an even number, one of the terms disappears, and with an odd number, the other one disappears. I think that this is a much more interesting function than the original hailstone series. I've been calling it the hailstorm series, and it's the fractal that you've been seeing throughout the video. Um, so if you're looking for a recreational mathematics problem, this is one that I recommend.